Yes, Chef! With Ryan. Each Tuesday, we have our super special segment with our global chef, culinary expert, Chef Ryan, in for Yes Chef. Good morning, Ryan. Wow. Good morning, Peter. You've gone the whole hog today. We've got like a mini restaurant, it seems, in here. Uh, if you're watching the video radio, or if you don't usually watch the video radio, today is the day to turn it on via the website, adidungradio.com, via the smartphone app, via YouTube, on air, Adidung Radio, because Ryan has brought in what we're going to be talking about today and some seasoning, some uh, little garnishes for it as well. That looks pretty good. Sorry, I can't stop laughing because I know Peter's not really excited about this. Yeah. This this is a controversial um, food, I suppose. Is it? Uh, across Korea. Yeah, a lot of people um, aren't really big fans of it. Oh, I is guess, that true? Guess, Even Koreans as well? Yeah, a lot of my... I, I love it, first off. Um, I always have. I, um, I, find, I continue to find better and better ones, uh -huh. uh, more and more unique ones. Um, but it's, uh, it's made from a soybean, kind of like a soy milk uh -huh. cold soup with noodles yeah. um, or konguksu, and there's a lot of different variations. And I think Peter hates it. And I love it, and, uh, and and we're going to talk about it today. Yeah, and you decide what to bring in, so you have brought this in. Last week, it was sangmyetang, right? Jinseng mm. chicken soup, and we were talking about in the summer. That was good, right? Like fire with fire. It was mm. really good. I love that as well. Mm. I had some last night as well at home, Did you? yeah, mm. and um, it was delicious. And this is also... Was it better than mine? No, it wasn't actually. Okay. Uh, Nowhere near as good, but I wasn't going to tell my wife that. And so this week is kind of the opposite theory when it's hot in the summer. Eat something cool. Yeah, the first time I ever had this, um, I, I was out hiking uh, in this exact time of year, you know, rainy uh, rainy season, and come off the mountain, and there's, there's often a lot of restaurants right there near the, the uh, base of the hiking trails. Mm -hmm. And I saw this picture of something that I hadn't tried before, and I was like, whoa, what is that? Yeah. And then out comes this big bowl. These are smaller than the usual portion sizes. Mm -hmm. you know? um, this great big metal bowl with um, a white um, liquid that has ice cubes in it, and then a bunch of like chewy delicious wheat noodles mm -hmm. um, um, a hard-boiled egg a little slice of tomato some cucumbers and some sesame seeds yeah. and all that together and I thought what in the world is this and then I tasted it and I was like oh it's like soy milk uh -huh. uh, which is not like soy milk that's sold in the West usually in the cartons you know um, this is this is uh, the Korean style is where you soak the soybeans you you boil them then chill them and you'll get uh, you'll blend them and then sometimes people remove more of the pulp than other times. Yeah. Um, the one we have today has quite a bit of the pulp in it. But. Yeah, so yeah. this is kongoksu, noodles in cold soybean soup. Mm -hmm. Like you said, similar to soy milk, but not the uh, Western version of soy milk, right, the kind right. of Korean version, which is really the beans mashed up. Well, this right? is the real deal. A lot of times uh, the Western versions will have things like xanthan gum or like uh, some other kind of thickener mm -hmm. um, added to it. And this is just straight up soybean. So really high in protein so if you've been out hiking yeah. you know and, and you want some protein and, and something really healthy soup you know like almost no fat um it's it's, it's good it's, i think that's why i like it because it makes me feel like i'm being so healthy when i enjoy it yeah so. getting proteins from a from a bean after all is always a healthy thing mm -hmm. and it's considered and i've been building it up as like a power food perfect for the summer when you're drained you've been sweating or working mm -hmm. hard throughout the day i guess because of the proteins right and the nutrients in it that's it um that's it. so you've brought in like four bowls of konguksu the thing that i have omitted i dislike <laughs> but you've brought in four versions i didn't even know that they existed i i knew that you weren't gonna be like really keen on this one today but i didn't know that you peter tell us about all these ingredients you're not a big fan yeah, of. yes so you brought in the garnish the tomatoes is that traditional tomatoes um on top i would say it's probably traditional for the last you know 40 years or so oh really but going before that i doubt it okay so i don't like tomatoes raw ones these are from the rooftop garden but yes yeah, still don't like them oh, yeah. um and then cucumbers is like my pet hate as well so oh, we've got oh, cucumbers going on top of the don't noodles even like now. cucumbers 
and soybeans just in general is not my favorite like i don't like tofu and uh, konguksu is my pet hate out of the noodle family like i like everyone likes noodles you just right you got to find a few other things that you don't like so you, you can put you, them in you these have, bowls you've brought in cold boiled eggs and i don't like cold boiled eggs i hate the smell as how well. do you not like boiled eggs like i like what about soft boiled eggs and dip in the salt yeah the pretty... soldiers yeah ah, but i don't eat the white okay. part and that's warm as well but when eggs are cold and they have that smell uh, like with an egg salad or an egg sandwich. So you've put all of my hated ingredients into a bowl. This could be the worst yes chef for it me was, ever. It was our evil plan to but get you, Peter. But also, yeah, you could educate me and maybe I'll change my mind. Maybe I'll be like, wow, I really love this. So to make this at home, Ryan, you, mm -hmm. you uh, described how you can do the uh, the broth or the, the soup or whatever you call it. The noodles themselves, you've brought in two versions, right? I would say that this one right here, would uh -huh. be the most um, the most commonly um, found version. It's the with, white noodles. It's with the the wheat flour noodles, and uh -huh. they're nice and and big and chewy, um, kind of like what you'd find in a jajamyeon, the the oh. uh, black bean oh, really? noodles, or kind of like the noodles you might find in kalguksu as well. They're the thicker, Just those chewier flour wheat noodles. Exactly. Just the standard exactly. ones. Right. Because oh. um, you want this really nice chewy texture. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's with the um, the white soybeans or the yellow soybeans is what you're getting there. So the, the base, the soup. Right. Okay. Right, right, right. That is so. the common one that I've seen on restaurants and stuff. So why don't we try that one first then, Ryan? Is that Ooh. okay? So yeah. our producer suggested that we try it without uh, like the extra seasoning. Sesame seeds is okay, but okay. without the extra flavorings in there. What have you brought? Is this salt? And I see sugar as well. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm a I've usually had it with salt. Uh -huh. um, but, is sugar but a thing? Sometimes I've seen people put watermelon in konguksu as well. Oh, to add some it. sweetness. Yeah. That's pretty cool. You've got a little egg cutter there, Ryan. How when, cool is that? When I was a little kid, I loved playing with these things. Yeah, like, don't put your finger under there. That would be very it's dangerous. It's not going to hurt anybody. It's just a little wire. Have you ever seen these? No. You didn't grow up with these? No, oh, funnily man, enough. Man, man, I remember why I didn't my mom showed me this the first time I was like three or four years old, and I was like, <gasps> that is the coolest thing ever. So it just slices a boiled egg That's into it. multiple slices. Yes, it's your worst nightmare. People. Yeah, and you're going to add that as well. Dun, Fantastic. Dun, dun. Okay, yeah. so the the standard one that we just mentioned there, that the wheat noodles, the white one, we're going to try this. Oh, yeah, um, so look, you can see that there's a lot of pulp inside this as well. This hasn't been strained a lot, has it? Right, right, and it's a it's a little bit frozen too because you really want this served cold, super super cold. So the so. reason I don't like this is because it smells so plain, right? It is pretty plain. Oh, I've heard some people describe it as like. Uh, pancake batter, like a thin Almost. pancake batter. Yeah. But when I'm telling you, when you get the good ones, you know the ones that are made real with with real soybeans, and then um, I like these the black versions with the black soybeans. Sometimes you can do this and take, say, um, cashews or almonds or peanuts or different kinds of nuts and grind them up with it, and yep. it adds so much more um, kind of depth. It's it's really cool. All right. So I'm going to try just a noodle at, at first, right? And this is the like standard I'm torturing version. you, but it's just soy. <laughs> yeah, and it's freezing cold as well. This is torture to me, but let's hope that I'm going to have my mind changed, right? But without seasoning, I'm not looking forward to this. Yeah. It has to it's have some so sugar plain. some salt. It's so I'll, plain. I'll do it just for I'm telling you, people sake. out there, if you... Oh, man, it is just like batter. It's just like mushy nothing. Well, hopefully there's some chew still in the noodles. I mean, but, no, the noodles yeah. are nice and chewy, but okay, like good. you wouldn't eat them plain, would you? When would you ever eat noodles plain right, with no sauce? Right. Like in a jajangmyeon with the black bean sauce. I can't even swallow this without no, some it's, teeth. It's just so healthy. You know, I'm sure it is healthy, um, but like with many healthy things, um, hmm. there's just no flavour to that. So, what can we add there to make it nicer? You'd say usually you add the salt, right? So, how Absolutely. much salt would you add, and do you well, mix it into the the broth? Every time you go and have this at a restaurant, well, I'd say every time, 99% of the time, they bring you a little dish of salt, uh -huh. with it so you can season it yourself. It's just up to you, right? Right. I've washed my hands, so I'm going to mm -hmm. say we'd need a lot of snort on this, right? It, it's just Go two, for it. two pinches, right? I, and I usually add more than that. Oh, right. Right. okay, then good. Yeah. Three. I thought, well, well three and a half. Um, and you think that would be enough, just a bit of salt? Then it's just going to be the taste of the salt, right? Now I'm going to make you try the broth. Get your spoon. Are you serious? Oh, man. <laughs> 
So this is my least favorite. They also have another version of this soybean called Biji. Biji, right? Right, right. Another one of my favorites. Which and... is basically just the pulp and the soup and that's it, right? Mm -hmm. With the rice. Uh, that's good. It's so much just like powder. Just like powder and soup. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but... No, this one... No, this says the pulp a lot of times. I, you know, I guess maybe... I don't know the attraction... I kind of like the smooth, silky ones, too. Really, without the you pulp in them. You pass them through a strainer or, like, uh -huh. cheesecloth. But yeah. still, it's going to be the same kind of flavor profile in that mm -hmm. there's nothing really stimulating about that flavor, right? If you like it, you like it. I mean, I definitely taste the sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the chewiness of the noodles is really important. That We've talked a lot about how... In, in all across Asia, the textures are so important. You get so much variation in texture. Yeah. Um, but it's not a, like a bowl full of flavors. A lot you, of my Korean friends, way. when I tell them that I like this, they're like, really? Yeah. You like that? And I'm yeah. like, yeah. yeah it's, it's, so it's you, that's like a dish of choice you have in the summer now and then, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, at that's least like right? <laughs> at least like three or four times through the summer. Because it, it is, you, you cannot get this in the wintertime. Uh -huh. Like I've never seen it for sale anywhere. After, say, September sure. or before June. Yeah, unlike yeah. naengmyeon, which is the other cold ice noodles, which you'll see all year round, right. yeah. the, the kongoksu, the soybean milk cold noodles, you will only see in the warmer months. So this one that is the same noodles, but mm -hmm. why is the broth black gray? Using black um, soybeans uh, and then also black sesame seeds is that often. that common corn? Uh, yes, yes. And it's more common down south or central uh -huh. South Korea. Yeah. And I don't mind the common kong tuyu. Mm -hmm. So that's the like black soybean milk. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. has It's a bit more savoury. Maybe a bit more you'll flavor. like this one yeah. more. Let's yes, try it. Let's give this a try. I'm going to put the salt in straight away because I know I'm not going to like it plain. Okay. Um, and then maybe with these last two bowls, uh, after the song break, we can put in some sugar and see how that tastes. Have you ever That's tried true. it with sugar? Actually, I have not. I have used watermelon before, which is essentially kind of similar. But uh, Okay, yeah. you just like put a, a, a watermelon slices slice? Slices of watermelon in there, yeah. Uh, kind of like the slices of pear that you would get in a naengmyeon. Yeah. Oh, oh that's I love a those. pretty good idea. Yeah, yeah they are the So highlight. you like naengmyeon? I love naengmyeon. Because that, the yuksu is full of MSG, right? The soup there. So it well, has a really... Yeah. Like the, the, the standard be. places, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that has a lot of flavor. This, on the other hand, let's give this a try, the black bean version. Go, Peter, go. All right. Immediately, because the salt is on there, there's something stimulating your mouth. So that's a good thing, right? Okay. Um, and, yeah, it definitely has some kind of flavor as opposed to the standard one. Um, Ryan is going to go crazy with that. I'm going to attempt to swallow this because it's still not that tasty. Uh, during a song break, we'll play some Infinite H and be back with some sugar-infused kongjutsu here. I'm sorry if I'm putting you off. Here is some pretty yeppa. We're back for part two of Yes Chef with Ryan, who's basically demolished the whole bowl of these black bean noodles. Hey, you're supposed to leave some for our friends outside, Ryan. Sorry. Did you, did you enjoy that? That was good. Really? You're nuts, man. No, look, you even admitted it. Even many Koreans are not that fond of this. I wonder if we did a survey outside the studio, how many people would not like this? Our producer obviously loves it because she says kongguksu chang. So the best thing is kongguksu. Well, you have a point, but uh -huh. I don't think there's that many Koreans that don't like boiled eggs or cucumbers or tomatoes. This is true. Yeah. Or just, in general, tofu. I think there um, are quite a few people, just in the world, that are not fond of cucumbers, though. Right? Some people have allergies. I have met a few. Yeah, cucumbers, yeah. because that's also the same category as the soybean. It's very plain, the taste, mm. right? It's just like... No real flavor. But anyway, let's read some messages from our listeners here. Uh, we've got one from 21 Crush in the U.S. who says, I don't drink soy milk anymore here in the U.S. because apparently there's lots of bad ingredients in it. I wonder, maybe preservatives or sweeteners or something put in? Yeah. What, what were you mentioning? A thickness. Uh, thickness xanthan in. gum is often used to thicken things up. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So and instead, starches. I like to drink organic milk, and that's what I posted up for today's hashtag. We'll read that a little later. Mm -hmm. um, and 21 Crush has gone on to say, 
I don't also like hard boiled eggs as well. There you go. See, it's normal. Don't. Normal. Don't support Peter's pickiness. <laughs> but I like tofu because a Filipino dessert has tofu in it, but I forgot the name, but I remember the ingredients. Um, besides tofu, it also has black syrup, uh, tapioca pearls, and uh, yeah, that's in mm. that dish. Mm. Uh, and then Ingin from Malaysia, also on my side, says, I uh, tried kongguk one time and that was the last time I'm on board with Peter I really dislike the soybean cold well, you, noodles you can't judge any dish by just trying it one time you might have had a bad one but you know she's posted up a picture and it looks like quite a nice one there's the black sesame seeds there's also the noodles that are very thin are they the same uh, type of noodles um, you, don't the use, you don't want to use you don't want to use the somyon no, oh, really you could use maybe the the jungmyeon uh -huh. um, it's a little bit bigger. Okay. Little, but, but the tiny little ones, you shouldn't use the really thin no, ones. No, there's, there's not any really nice chew to those. Um, so, yeah, I recommend doing something like the kalguksu or uh -huh. oh, actually kind of like a spaghetti, you know, works works mm. pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Aaron from the US says, that cold bean soup looks so interesting. It's hard to picture the task of how Korean soy milk tastes because I've only tried Western soy milk. I'm curious though, the cold bean soup served with any side items that complement the dish. Uh, like you said, oh, sometimes watermelon. Yolmu kimchi. Oh, yolmu kimchi. So what's the yolmu in uh, English? Um, Is that like the stalk like a, bit? It's like a, a radish without <laughs> without the radish. It's like the yeah. just this little root and then the greens. Yeah. Um, and what it's what it does with this dish because you almost always see it served with this. Yeah. Um, it adds this really nice sour saltiness that just makes your mouth water, mm -hmm. and you can go back and forth between those flavors. It's true. So. It's very rare you just eat this by itself. You always have something stimulating. And like you said, the yomu kimchi is very popular with this. Yeah, right? it's not too super spicy or anything, but it is really nice and sour and just makes your mouth water. You can often hear people in the restaurants, and I, I do this too now, because uh, you can taste it better if you kind of like kind of smack a little bit which uh -huh. my mother would smack me if i like heard me do it right but here it's all right yeah yeah it's okay and and um and when you do that i mean your mouth is watering so much from this sourness <laughs> and it's just kind of a nice crunch and you know it's really good delicious uh zarifa from malaysia says me too peter i like having my noodles hot or warm it's just weird to have them cold i can never process how people eat cold noodles hang in there peter while you're trying those don't die please i'm not going to die because i do like naengmyeon which literally is cold noodles right mm -hmm. and the i like the mul naengmyeon so it has the broth rather than the pibin which is the spicy one maybe okay. next time or sometime in the summer we could do that because i sure. love it and they do the would really you do Godari, the, Godari, the half the, dried Pollock pieces. That's not bad at all. You like that? Yeah, okay. or even the Hue Nengmyeon, which is the raw fish. Oh, I love that. And the one cold too. noodles. Yeah, They're I could good. bring you one of those. It's just that these have much less flavor than than those naengmyeons, those cold noodles, right? And Annie says, I'm curious about this kongguksu. I'm okay with eating plain food, so I wonder if I would like this too, as I've never eaten noodles in soy milk. Have you ever seen it Ed, anywhere else? Soy milk noodles. Not that I can remember. No, right? It is. It is a little strange. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, it's uh, when you're when you're out and it's hot and rainy, and you stop into a little place and and have this. It really does revitalize you, and it just feels like a really nice. It's kind of like having a salad. You mm -hmm. know, it's kind of like having a something light for lunch. This is not a dinner. You know, yeah. It it's, wouldn't be a breakfast. It's like an afternoon. You know, after. power up energy snack. Yeah, and it's, right. in, in that regard, it's really, really nice. So what, what we've got here is again the two same broths, but the noodle is changed. It's the buckwheat noodles, right? Yes, known as yeah. the memu kuksu. Yeah, which are super good for you, help balance blood sugar. If there's any um, folks that are diabetics out there, then um, this kind of well is known to be really helpful. We're going to add in the sugar to these, You right? just dumped that whole thing I in I did. There. You can tell that I'm not a culinary expert, am I? I'm just going to assume that mixing it will do the trick. Uh, so with these buckwheat noodles, obviously very easy to buy, but are they easy to make? Do you ever make these? No, uh, no. They're not They're not done like Italian pasta and, uh -huh. and put through a roller or, or cut like that. They're actually... Um, 
forced through a mold, kind of like the Play-Doh oh, when really? you're a kid. Yeah, yeah, usually. And they do have to add that. a little bit of wheat flour or else they won't hold together. That is and... the perfect description of what these do actually taste like. But so far, everything <laughs> tastes like Play-Doh, right? And that's what I'm going to say. Seriously. Uh, you're mean. All right. Mm, with the sugar, okay, it adds a bit of sweetness, but yeah. still very plain, I must say. Um, buckwheat noodles, I think a bit more flavor than the plain right. wheat noodles. I feel a, a need to, to defend this food because you you're, should. you're talking so much trash about it. <laughs> I'm um, demolishing it. I do apologize. No, really, like, okay, if you do something up like this, mm -hmm. even if, you, if you've if you tried gongutsu and you didn't like it the first time, if you do up something like this, take your soybeans, um, soak them, boil them, and then chill them down, but then also add in some different nuts, whatever your favorite nuts are. Um, maybe some pine toast, nuts toast them a little bit. Yeah. Sure, pine nuts. Um, even I've seen some people use cashews or or almonds or or walnuts. You know, mm. and and toast them a little bit. Get them really nice and dry, and then grind them up with the soy milk. And it yeah. sounds a little strange, but it's so it's so good. So and then it's still a kongguksu. I mean, a lot of uh, really nice Korean restaurants in the countryside will do it that way. And it's, it's awesome. So I just tried the broth of this uh, black bean with the buckwheat noodles. Mm -hmm. And I've got to say, I don't mind the soy milk in the cartons that they sell here, the black bean version. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't even taste as good as that. So I'm just wondering, here's a question. Could I just put some noodles in literally a carton pack of soy milk and it would taste equivalent to this? No, sir. No? No. No. That no, would not be a good combination. Well, it depends on the soy milk. You know, uh -huh. often they've got vanilla added in there or sugar or... Is that um, why they taste good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to my palate, to my, like, infant palate, right? Yeah, I you know, I guess this is kind of a minimalist kind of style, mm -hmm. you know? Keeping um, things as basic, as healthy as possible as right. well. Can we switch here, Ryan, so I just get to try the last one? So I can say, <laughs> I can put it on my resume that I tried four different types of konguksu, the cold soybean I'm broth noodles. <laughs> why, why judge? Who knows? This could be the one, Ryan, for me. Mmm, mmm. Oh, oh, it's the same as all the others. Tastes like Play-Doh. Um, yeah, this is not for me this week. And we do actually have a lot of listeners who agree with me. So I think this is a very uh, acquired taste, I think, right? Let's see here. Um, we've got Roz from the US saying, I might be with Peter on this one. I'm not a big fan of cold noodles in the first place and definitely not a fan of soy milk. It might be interesting, but also strange. Uh, K-pop for life has also posted from New Zealand saying, I hate even rice because it's so plain to me. And I was telling Ryan, when I was young, I used to do that as well, right? Um, so you can you can see what I'm talking about. Unju Lee from Korea says, Peter, is it good? Konguksu isn't easy to eat, even for Korean people, as you said, but my mum always eats it in the summer. Surely it's good for your health. I'm going to try it this summer. Um, so thanks for all supporting me. Uh, Siska as well saying, I don't usually like cold noodles. Thank you very much today. Um, and our producer says, after listening to this show, many foreigners will not like konguksu because of you, <laughs> no. Peter. Um, but it's very tasty. No, definitely, in my opinion, an acquired taste. Not something to take visitors from abroad for their first meal or a representative dish. Maybe something like if they're here for a week or so. And like you said, you go hiking. Just give it a try, a mouthful. I made my, my, my parents try it and sister when they came. Oh, what did they think? And um... Be honest. Yeah, they weren't they weren't too sure about that. <laughs> see, well. see, I'm telling you, this is a very difficult dish to like. In fact, I will go out on a limb and say, out of all the ones we've done, this is the hardest, I think, for really harder to than like. sea cucumber and yeah. abalone. And... Yeah, because at least they have like a texture, you know, in your mouth. This is kind of like you said, play doh, like kind of a mush in there. Um, so yeah. If you were one of my culinary students and being this, I'd kick you out of class. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so our producer has said, in the future, if we ever do any like bets or competitions, mm. as a punishment, I will have to eat a <laughs> bowl of kongguksu. I think that's a great punishment. I don't think I'll be able to do that as well. Uh, thank you for all your messages as well. We are going to go and do some what's in your fridge. We've got a little bit of time for that, Ryan. So can you stop eat? Obviously, you love this. 
I'm enjoying this. Yeah, yes. you've demolished like two and a half bowls. No more kongoksu for Ryan. Now I want to slice time. another egg. No. This is so cool. Where where can you get these from, by the way? Is that a common thing in the West? Um, we yeah yeah okay. So I grew up with this when I was a kid. Peter hates boiled eggs too. I don't understand cold, cold ones. Okay. Um, but isn't that uh, man? When my mom first showed me this when I was a little kid, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Thanks, mom. Amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, so neat. I'm making a mess in the studio here. Yeah. So you want to bite? I don't want to bite. No, thank you. <laughs> Although, having said that, with cold eggs, there's one type that I like, which is the Korean version at the ginger bung, the mm -hmm. steam room. You know the smoked boiled eggs, are they? The ones that are brown? Oh, you like those. Those have an extra flavor, right? Right. The soy and, yeah. yeah, yeah they're yeah. pretty good. So, Ryan, we've got a couple of uh, what's in your fridges here. Um, I'll let you have a quick look at the ingredients while I read a message to you from Audrey in France, who says, I can't listen to the show because there's no rerun and it's on too late. We will try and fix that. I hope to kick out another show that gets a rerun and we'll try to do one for ourselves. But, you've said you can find Yes Chef videos on YouTube and we have the podcast version as well all that useless introduction brings me to a completely unrelated question chef ryan siska has said she'll meet me in korea if you will cook for us or if we can try your food somewhere so will you agree to let us know where you're cooking or even cook for us personally so i can come to korea with siska in the autumn Absolutely. And in the autumn, um, I'm consulting for a, a new restaurant that is opening up in about a month. Ooh. And uh, it's it's not Han Chic. It's actually more um, Latin American, Mexican, uh, Colombian, Brazilian. Cool. And um, it's going to be so amazing. Oh, man. I've, I've been working uh, nonstop the past few weeks on the menu. Okay. It's going to be exciting. I so, can't can't wait to get a lot of folks to come check yeah, it out. Yeah, so. yeah. We'll come along as well. And yeah. that means Siska and Audrey, you have to come to Korea then. Uh, yeah. We've got a couple of what's in your fridges here, right? Yes. Uh, Rosalind, we've got uh, fresh tilapia, guavas, green beans, uh, tahini. Oh, I love tahini. You know what tahini is? No. Um, it's uh, like if peanut butter was made from sesame seeds. Oh, wow. Is yeah. it good? Yeah, it's yeah. so good. And actually, it works really well with Korean stuff because we use so much toasted sesame oil uh -huh. and sesame seeds. Yeah. Um, she also has yellow squash and Parmesan and cherries and lemons and hummus. This is a really interesting fridge, yeah. Rosalind. Um, when I see the tilapia, I'm thinking of these flautas I've been working on for the restaurant. Um, tilapia poaches really well and then can be rolled up in a flour tortilla and then and then deep fried and it actually holds in there without having to fold up the ends. Nice. Um, and then you get the crunch of the tortilla, but then you have the really soft tilapia. Mm. Uh, an old friend, chef friend of mine showed me that trick a long time ago. Um, let's see. I, I miss yellow squash. I'm trying to grow some, but I haven't gotten any coming in yet. Um, what else could we do here? I want to incorporate that tahini. Um, hummus. Can you have it with like a slice of toast and jam, like a peanut butter jelly? Does it work well like that? Um, not usually. Not so what, what what it would work really well with is is like hummus. Um, uh -huh. when you take the chickpeas, boil them down, and then you add in some tahini to give that depth of flavor. Oh, together um, in a hummus with right, tahini. Right, right, right. I love hummus. It's delicious. Um, you do. Yeah, it's I, not only, too plain for you. Only recently got into that, <laughs> but that's quite seasoned in the UK, like a bit salty. Yeah, mm. it's nice yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if it's too bland, I'm sure you. I wouldn't eat it. Well, yeah, I'd throw it away. Um. <laughs> There's, let's see, I don't know if I want to incorporate the guavas. I would do, um, I, w I would do the tilapia, but then you, so, tilapia is so soft and, and, uh, and, and tender. So you want to have a, a contrast, so something crispy. And what might work will, could be da, 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 if you could kind of do like a Parmesan with the yellow squash and get the edges to be a little bit crispy. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. What else? Would, the crunch with the green beans could work. Um, I'm just talking about flavor and, or, and textural contrast. Um, so if the whole dish is all too soft, then it kind of puts people off. So yeah. It's more exciting, more fun if you can have those contrasts. Definitely. Those. If it's too soft yeah. like this kongguk soup. <laughs> no, you hear you get the chewy of the noodle, and then you get the soft, silky, of the, and then the crunch of the cucumber. Which I don't eat, yeah. So it's my fault, isn't it? You're right, Ryan. Goodness. <laughs> you, my got, goodness. you got another one there for us as well. Let's see. What have we got in here? All oh, right. In España. Let's see. That's from the hungry gooner, Tasha. I'll listen that all oh, right Spain. we got milk yogurt cheeses uh cream slash grated okay uh lots of different cheeses sandwich breads uh spanish omelets i know those um 
Let's see, egg, onion, potato, cherry, tomatoes, olives, tomatoes, eggs, spinach, mixed salad, beets. I love beets. Um, this is everything in your green fridge. Peppers, avocado, fruits, dates. God, there's a lot of things in here. Okay. Uh, gasp oh, gazpacho. Do you know gazpacho? I've heard of it. What is it? Refresh uh, my memory. Well, we're talking about cold soup here today. Oh, and the cold soup, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's um, it's like a bell pepper and garlic, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes tomato. But then you got to get the right amount of vinegar. It's okay. so similar to like a like a bibing um, naengmyeon or a, or like a makguksu in, in oh, a really? lot of ways because mm -hmm. it's, it can be a little bit spicy. Yeah. Um, Ooh. But it's oh, it's so awesome in the summertime in Spain. Um, golly, you've already got some ready food <laughs> in your fridge here. Um, olives, tomatoes. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me give you a little trick with the beets. Um, mm -hmm. We were just talking about hummus. Yeah. Uh, it's such beets have such an amazing, beautiful color. Yeah. Um, and if you Stains just grate a, a little bit of those <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, onto an onion pickle, it's awesome. They're beautiful. They're bright, and it adds a little flavor from the beet. So if you if you thinly slice uh, onions like yeah. little rings or run them through a mandolin, sure. And then put vinegar and sugar and salt on there. Um, and then grate a little bit of the beet. It'll mm -hmm. brighten it up so much. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Another thing with a hummus, if you boil the beet a little bit yeah. and then take it out of that water and it's nice and soft and, and grind it up with those chickpeas, yeah. you get this really bright, vibrant hummus. That doesn't affect the flavor too much? A little bit. A little bit. It's just oh. another earthiness to it, you know, but um, it, it's, gorgeous. it's gorgeous. Is that what they add then to some pickles of the radish here in Korea that come out like purple? Um, dun, 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 purple cabbage, probably. Ah, I see. Yeah. Okay, does that do the same thing? It does. It oh. does yeah. Okay, dokie. That's cool to brighten up your the dish mm. there, Tasha. Thank you for that tip. One quick question I wanted to ask you, Ryan. Talking about avocados in Korea, they're so expensive, and mm. I bought a few and I've opened them, and they've been horrible, like black and stuff. How do you tell a um, ripe avocado? I can or tell a good you. One? I can tell you the best thing to do. Okay, now if you're if you're closer to the source of avocados, mm -hmm. you really don't have to worry so much. But okay. remember that we are about as far away <laughs> from the natural source of avocados as we possibly could be here. Yep. So often what they are done is is they pick them really green and then ship them over yep. here refrigerated. It's kind of ripe and on the way. that you know, so some of them have been refrigerated more than others, mm -hmm. um, and then some of them have been out of the fridge and then back in sure. more than others. And you don't and know, that's how. Right? That's why it's harder. To, the best thing I can say to do yeah. is um, find someone in a market near you who gets in cases, okay. and then and just build a relationship with them. If if you're here in Korea, that's the only way. And to they'll really be do honest. It. Hopefully, I was at Garak Shijang. Oh.